Welcome, everyone. Are we live? Can we get started? I think so. I mean, <laughs> I'm looking at the ABC screen, so I assume. Yes, you're live. Ah, uh, cool. So welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Goche. Uh, I'm working for Tenement. I've been working there for uh, almost three years now. And I'm really, really excited um, to present the new IBC website. So as you all know, uh, IBC is launching uh, with a target upgrade. This has, been, this has been in the works for like uh, two years now. And, and we thought it deserves its own website. Uh, so you can now access it uh, uh, with the following URL, ibcprotocol.org. Uh, it's live. And I, I'll just do a, a short walkthrough. Um, this is and the rest of us are here and we'll comment. Yeah, of course. Uh, this is going to be like a, a fun session. So don't hesitate, guys, to, to, to jump in. Uh, so what we wanted to do with this website uh, is make sure that uh, IBC has its own brand um, because it deserves it. Uh, IBC is what we consider the standard for intelligent blockchain communication. It has been in the works, uh, again, for two years. Um, and yeah, this, this website is going to basically enable you to get all the information you need about IBC, some, docu some useful documentation, uh, answer some FAQ questions. Uh, and more. And of course, uh, this is just the version one. We have like other versions in the works uh, with more information and more content. But we really wanted to have something to to show you uh, for this uh, network upgrade. So, on if you navigate to the homepage, you'll get some uh, useful information uh, about IBC and then uh, some news. So, pretty exciting stuff happening uh, in the Cosmos ecosystem. Uh, you, you're invited to check it out. Um, as we're going to, to, to explain, IBC has been developed uh, by a bunch of organizations, uh, not just one. So yeah, we've all collaborated together to uh, deliver IBC today. And this is just the beginning. Um, and I got to say, you... they're awesome to work with. <laughs> yeah, everyone here is awesome. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, if, if you want to chat, uh, we have some, some useful links here. Uh, I, I guess the most important section of the website is probably the documentation page. So here you'll be able to find uh, both the overview paper and the technical specification. Um, so these are basically the, the canonical reference if you want to delve more into IBC. Uh, then you'll be able to see the status of different IBC implementations. Uh, obviously, we have like for the, the only the Cosmos SDK implementation is ready to be deployed in production, but uh, many other people and organizations are working on other implementations uh, of IBC. Um, for example, like the Substrate IBC for the Polkadot ecosystem. We also have like a REST implementation, uh, and I'm sure many more are, are, are coming. Uh, the red layers uh, are, I mean, we're, we're probably going to explain it further, but uh, these are like uh, processes that enable um, the packets to be relayed between chains. Uh, and just like IBC implementations, we'll have uh, several relayer implementations. And by the way, anyone is welcome to come in and 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 um, build additional implementations or relayer implementations. Uh, and finally, we have like IBC applications. So just to be clear, uh, IBC. When we talk about IBC, we're really talking about like the low-level uh, protocol that enables you know connections, channels, and IBC packets to be relayed. But of course, the end goal is to build applications on top of it. Um, so an example of an application is to send transfer uh, transfer tokens between one chain uh, and another. Uh, but like I, I can I can tell you that like many many more uh, interesting IBC applications are being developed right now, uh, and will be developed in the future. And then we have some Cosmos SDK guides. So if you want to add uh, IBC to your SDK blockchain or build an IBC application specifically for the Cosmos SDK, you will find useful links to do so here. And then uh, we have the FAQ, of course. Uh, uh, this is uh, pretty complete, but we will have, of, we will probably have uh, other uh, sections in the future. So for now, this is like a pretty ba basic and straightforward website. Uh, but we do hope that, uh, yeah, in the future, it's going to be extended uh, to add like a lot more things. Um, one final thing uh, that needs to be said is that this is fully open source. So um, you will be able to find the source code uh, on GitHub. Uh, so the organization is Interchain.io. Uh, it's the Interchain Foundation. Um, 
a GitHub organization. And then the repo is called ibcprotocol.org. So if you want, uh, if you find like, for example, um, a typo, or if you want to uh, signal that you're, uh, you know, building a new IBC implementations uh, or anything else, uh, feel free to, you know, jump into this repo, open a pull request, and once it's merged to the, the main branch, it's going to be uh, automatically deployed on the on the website. So yeah, that, that's about it uh, for this uh, website tour. Um, you, yeah, I thank you guys for, for joining. And yeah, if you, if, you know, Agoric or Shen or, you know, uh, Chris, you, you have any, any comments or remarks, feel free to, to jump in as well. I think you're muted. Oh, I am. All right, now we there all get to join you. And Billy will join us too here eventually as well. But in the meantime, I asked in chat how many people know what IBC is, right? And I keep, you know, we've got the technical stuff, you know, with, with, with all these teams that have been building awesome, awesome things. Welcome, Billy. Hello. How's it going, everybody? Good. Hello, Billy. Okay, Hello. so I didn't really need you to moon me. <laughs> hey. I'm, here, I'm here in ICF uh, orbital base stations. Um, I like it. <laughs> it actually looks like a real backdrop. <laughs> it is, in fact, a real backdrop. Yes. It is. Wow. Yes, yes. <laughs> I didn't. Just, I couldn't get OBS, OBS installed, so up it went. <laughs> Production quality very high. How's everybody doing this morning? This awesome. Evening. Pretty good so far. Awake. Awake. Cool. We got a couple yes. people coming from Berlin. Dean, you're calling from California, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And um, so you're calling from Proxima Centauri? Exactly. What <laughs> <laughs> did my internet go down? The reception's bad out here. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the topic of this call is IBC overview and the future of the interchain. Um, we've got Chris Groves from Interchain GmbH and uh, Sean Brightwhite from Informal, and we've got Dean Tribble from Agoric here. Uh, you guys are all involved with IBC at various levels. Um, I think probably Chris, you're the, the most associated with the protocol. You've been working on the, the spec for, for quite some time. Uh, when did you, I know, I know that when you joined Tendermint, you were sort of promised you get to work on this really fun, interesting problem IBC, <laughs> right? What was, what was that like? And, and when did you actually get to begin working on this fun, cool problem? That's right. That's right. I, uh, when I, interviewed for Tendermint. At that point, I was not in Berlin. I was in the United States, so all my interviews were phone calls. And the third interview was with uh, Ethan Buckman, uh, who I think is currently busy uh, testing the Stargate upgrade. Uh, <laughs> so he may not be here at the moment, but that's because he's doing more important things. Uh, and uh, when we sort of negotiated at the end, he said, well, it seems like a good fit. You seem interested. Uh, you know, what would you like to do? What would make it uh, interesting for you. I said, well, I like this interchain protocol thing you're working on. That sounds cool. Uh, can I come work on that? He said, sure. We just need to like launch this Cosmos. Hub. It'll just take a few months. Don't worry about it. Help out with that. And then you can work on the interchain protocol. Then uh, I flew to Berlin. Oh, hello, Ethan. Uh, and uh, a year later, we launched the Cosmos Hub. <laughs> but uh, in that period, of course, I learned a lot about uh, blockchains and then had a chance to work on the IBC specification, which eventually, uh, unbelievably, is now being deployed. Which took yeah. longer than one could believe, and yet it's still astonishing that it's all sort of here and out. It's really amazing. So you were working a lot with, with Dean during that, that time when you actually did get to shift to working on the IBC spec. What was, how did that relationship begin? Were, Dean, were you involved from day one? Is this something that uh, people asked you to get involved with? Uh, is this something that you were proactively getting involved with? What was that, what was the beginning of that relationship with you and IBC like? Um, so uh, as, as Zucky tells me, tells us, it, you know, I, we were involved since before day one, which is to say, you know, we've been doing distributed system stuff, myself, Markham, a few others here at Agoric for a long time. And they were looking for solutions to some problems and stumbled upon some of, you know, some of the sites that talked about our work back from, you know, the 90s or the 2000s or whatever I think it was. And um, went, you know, problems. They've, they've, they've thought about these. So we can focus on getting a chain out and then come back and solve these set of problems. Um, and, and, um, and we were working on uh, starting to work on the Agoric chain where we were building our interchain distributed protocol stuff. And we met at... Um, 
there, there was a powwow at, I think, the first of interchange conversations uh, in Berlin. That's right. That's right. Where basically, and, um, go ahead. oh, sorry, sorry to cut you off, team. No, but I want to give credit where credit is due. Where basically, uh, all of the you know, twenty-five to thirty-year-olds working at uh, AIB said, "Oh, we have all these cool ideas." Uh, you know. What do you think about them? And Agoric said, oh, we tried this 20 years ago and it doesn't work. <laughs> and we're like, oh. But then, then they were right. Yeah, so uh, sure. they said, oh, you should do this thing instead. We're like, hmm, that makes a surprising <laughs> amount of sense. Let's do that. And then yeah. that amalgamation of uh, blockchains plus uh, solid uh, distributed systems reasoning became IBC. Yeah, and, and, and it really was a synthesis because what we had is this powwow where, you know, we were doing a chain, you know, we were used, doing distributed protocol to be able to have our client talk to the chain and be able to have multiple chains talking to each other and so forth. IBC, you know, it, you know Cosmos had the, the vision of, you know, the interchain, they had articulated this interchain vision, they were working on it, and there was sort of a clear alignment of a bunch of these things, but we really wanted to dig into the technical details to see whether all of the features that we needed were going to be in IBC and you know the timing would work out and have the performance and you know and that the IBC team would actually get something of value from talking to us um, and and the thing that I was really delighted by is you know is you know Chris as you saw here really liked what we brought to the table in terms of thinking about the distributed system thing and from the other side to us, IBC had already, you know, they thought through a bunch of these best practices of how to have one chain figure out whether it could believe another and how to set it up securely and how to do the validation of the light lines and all these things that, that you know, they were not in, 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 in the rest of our picture. And so putting those two together, you know, the IBC is really a successful merging of those two streams of development um, in a way that, that you know, that, that, that really did uh, bring us the best of both worlds. So I'm really excited about it. And Sean, you're, you've sort of joined the uh, most recent to the sort of IBC effort, but you're working on some of the most sort of advanced and exciting aspects of it. How has that sort of transition been for you? You, you joined the Cosmos. Tell us, tell us a bit about that process. It's been interesting to play catch up for the past year and a half where most of the design was done in this like two year sprint. I think they spent 35 hours in the same room as each other during the, the <laughs> interchange conversations, right? Like everyone smelt the same at the same point. And out, out of that came sort of like this tribal domain now. So, oh yeah, the light client and like backward verification, right? And all these, these things that have very complicated implications which are never discussed because everything that was like inside the room Took, like, I wrote a spec. Of, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> it's, really written no, it's well understood. It's well the relayer. We all know how that works, right? So it was uh, this really fun process of, of, of working with, with 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 Dean and and Chris, and most importantly, uh, Anka Zemfir, who who couldn't make it today, but is, is probably the best representation of of, of informal uh, contribution to, to to IBC. So working working with her, uh, trying to. Uh, Bring it, let's say, to like production grade from 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 rough idea on on a whiteboard in Berlin and marker that will never be removed. So in some ways, it's permanent, right? But <laughs> in other ways, it's completely ephemeral uh, and 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 trying to to to, to make it re uh, real. So um, I think we we've made good progress there. IBC uh, is ready. It's been running. Um, I guess what we could call. A stable, but it is really just, just, just really the start. We're we're really at almost like a new day zero, uh, and now, and and we an anticipate that uh, what will come next will probably be nothing like uh, uh, what came yeah. before. You know, we've been living, built, building this thing for you know the last year or whatever, or 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 kibitzing on other people building these things, depending on which person in the room you are, um, <laughs> um, and 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 it's still was only as we were heading into this Stargate release that, you know, and, and starting from the demo day in January, actually, where there were multiple applications that were, you know, like, like a Gork, we'll be, we'll be launching a new chain. Unlike everything prior to basically today, we won't be launching in a vacuum. We will be launching connected to liquidity pools, connected to services, connected to the hub, connected to Cosmos, Cello, connected to ETH, you know, and we get connected to ETH because somebody stood up a zone that provided that service and we can get access to it. And if they go down, well, you know what? Somebody else stood up one too and we can connect to them instead, right? And so just this, 
you know, it, it's like suddenly we went from having data centers to having the internet, right? So tomorrow is the interchain, which we just didn't have yesterday. And that's, that, that's really a sea change. You know, a year ago, you know, people would kind of go, yeah, interop will be interesting someday. And now we just saw lots of demos of things that, that just like, yep, once I'm connected, I can do all this awesome stuff. Right. And so there's this pent up demand that suddenly, you know, we're going to, you know, drop the crystal in and boom, it all it, 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 it all takes off. So very excited about this. So early on when Cosmos white paper is being written and, you know, this idea of Internet of Blockchain seemed possible, but the actual implementation or, or how we're going to get there was still unclear. I think, you know, the, the, the minimum bar was like, we'll figure out token transfers. Uh, maybe we'll figure out arbitrary data. Um, and then, you know, through the process, it seemed like actually this is really possible to be really flexible. We can actually do so, so much. I'd be curious, like when or if it was maybe it was that that session at uh, Berlin Hackathon where where you where the spec transition from like at a minimum we'll be able to do this to like, oh, my gosh, we can do this full, huge and exciting range of things and we can actually do it. It's not like a, a hope anymore. I see the path. Was that? Was that in the That's a good that question. Well, you know, credit where credit is due, the original impetus for IBC came from the, of course, Cosmos White Paper written by Jay Bucky. Um, and I even believe that, uh, according to some conversations I had with Jay, there were even earlier conversations Jay had with some awesome guy in Noisebridge, San Francisco, that a uh, day to think of some of the initial concepts for IBC. So the, uh, uh, ideological genealogy is, is quite deep here. Um, however, the version of IBC discussed in the Cosmos Micro do, does focus much more on token transfers and it doesn't have any of this sort of handshake setup or dynamic um, a dynamic connection channel and client handling that the version of IBC we've implemented in production ended up with. Um, probably there are a few factors. Uh, the people involved in the design of IBC, such as myself, have an aesthetic preference for protocols which solve all the possible problems that is possible to solve with a particular class of protocol at once, <laughs> uh, which is only true because we are very lazy and I don't want to write something twice. So if we can only write something once and then like lots of people can implement it and it will solve many problems, that's nice. Um, I really think that design session, 35 hours is, I mean, it wasn't quite 35 hours, but um, yeah, that really made uh, there were two solid days uh, in a barely aerated room in kind of hot Berlin in the summer, uh, which at the time was intense but enjoyable. Now, of course, it seems like a dream of a past long forgotten <laughs> pre coronavirus times. <laughs> so the other thing that, that, that the other big transition period was the, the review. Right, that that you know. So Chris did has done an awesome job driving the standard, right? And then we, you know, and then we had to review it. And it was one of those things where this is one of those things where okay, it's going to take a couple of days to review it. Just like no, no, <laughs> it's not going to take a couple of days to review it. That's and, right. That's you know, right. Um, uh, that was one where it sort of started. It's just like right, this isn't going to work. We, we trotted out um, a review process we'd use for specification documents in previous, you know, in in, in previous lives at, at Agoric, and and the whole gang went through this process of, and of, of capturing all the comments and then capturing responses to them and revisiting and making sure that we agreed with the results of the responses and applying the changes. And, you know, and so that's where, like, that's where I first got to really you know, work with Anka, for example, that, 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 that Sean mentioned. And, she, you know, and just the different people that came in with thoughtful comments about how this stuff would work um, that gets like, oh, that's what they were thinking, or that's what they needed, or there's a problem that's niggling at them, and then and it finally crystallized here, stuff like that. So, so the transition from you know coming together with a coherent design that we thought could do all of these things to reviewing an actual design, going yeah, yeah, I can do it, except for this gap, and we need to work that out, and that took another you know nine months instead of the three weeks it was allotted to that sort of thing. Um, but 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 those were. Um, but that was just a huge, you know, reality check of, yep, this is a real protocol. This can really work. I'd also um, like to specifically call out to the audit, which Informal performed in conjunction with Entertain yes. Game Bay Ha uh, in fall 2020, which was the most intensive, frankly, audit any part of the Cosmos, Cosmos software stack has ever seen, um, which is uh, 
awesome that it happened for IVC and it's happened for everything. We'll get there. Um, uh, and that resulted in, um, it, it was a very close collaboration between Informal and IG. Uh, Informal looked over the spec, looked over the code, found a bunch of discrepancies, you know, nothing, uh, uh, well, uh, much more in terms of things we needed to fix um, and like minor bits about the protocol that needed to change than like, uh, you know, we didn't change any core design at that point, but it was absolutely essential for ensuring that what we're launching is as safe as we can make it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we did, uh, you know, during that process, we had a really just fantastic collaboration with Informal, with all the yeah. people at Informal who were looking over the spec, thinking about it from the perspective of Tendermint, from the perspective of outsiders who, you know, are not going to make the same mistakes by asset that we made since we wrote the spec and then implemented it. Um, that kind of uh, reality check was absolutely necessary. Yeah, it was great to sort of uh, have our our team really dig into it. And actually, even though there were some some issues, there was a shocking few, uh, considering how, how how deep and how thorough uh, and how let's say unproven it was at the time. It seemed like like ninety nine point nine nine percent of uh, of the stuff was was where it needed to be. Uh, and it also gave us an opportunity to start you know expanding. The field of human capital working on the spec, you know, like maybe it's maybe so far it's 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 been people, uh, mostly mostly on this in the in the chat or or even on, on this call. But uh, the next generation of, of of IBC when it really does become the internet is going to be a, a far far larger group of, of of contributors. So it was the first step in sort of uh, devoting our, ourselves as a community to like expanding the range of human capital that that can be productive in in, in IBC. Sean, I remember, I mean, you were maybe the first, one of the first users who really like onboarded IBC once it was kind of at a, a finished state. I mean, I, I imagine that this was sort of in parallel with the informal, I mean, with the, with the audit and, and maybe there's some changes, but like, I remember, you know, seeing you in the office one day and you were, you know, also still relatively new to Rust. I think this came with the idea of building IBC in Rust and it felt a little bit, you looked like had like a the Neo look in your eyes, Matrix, you're like, I know what you did too. <laughs> I know how IBC works. <laughs> well, I, I think. That, go ahead. I was gonna say, can you talk about that? Was that like a moment for you where it like clicked, or like you realized how flexible or how powerful it was? And, and if not, when was that moment, or, or has that moment come yet? I, I think the first moment that I had uh, that you saw in my eyes is I, is I sort of like was able to like do the chain of trust that this actual thing is is like secure or whatever because we we talk about it in terms of like channels and and packets and all these constructions but these constructions actually uh, serve a purpose you know to sort of like amortize verification costs or or, or whatever and and being able to to, to understand that uh, took a little while a little while and I think you know uh, Gautier's effort. You know, to sort of uh, provide a new representation of, of what IBC is beyond just like you know specification um, is is going to be absolutely critical to, uh, to 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 its success. So for for, for me, you know, I, I really had to uh, let's say uh, not go easy on, on Chris, and he was of course incredibly generous, uh, spending 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 time with us. He's always been been generous, but. Um, obviously, uh, we need that, that that process to scale. We need more people who have that sort of uh, neo neo moment. Um, so, as the, the the spec right now is is, is quite a quite a technical document, but at informal, uh, we're quite committed to sort of uh, stewarding um, the, the specification to a much larger audience, and that means not just having you know uh, a, a technical doc for people that you know have been working on it for a year. But having sort of an English version that sort of onboards new users. It also involves making the spec not just something to be read by and understood by people, but something to be uh, understood by computers. So all of it is going to be uh, spec in TLA and provide sort of uh, a de the developer experience that we anticipate is one that people building on, on IBC will get sort of test vectors for free. So essentially, as you implement your 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 extension or or your version or implementation or whatever you could uh, sort of assert conformance uh, with the specification um, pretty much from, from, from day zero. Uh, and sort of lining that up with, with the onboarding story is, 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 is what we, we really believe is going to drive a sort of Cambrian explosion of, of, of use cases for IBC. Yeah, I saw a demo yesterday from Starport team at Tendermint. And I don't know if this is meant to be public yet, but it was, but it was really exciting. Uh, they've, they basically set up a command. So if you're familiar with the Starport command line tool, it helps scaffold Cosmos SDK chains. 
And uh, there's a command to sort of build up a, a basic chain, and there's a command to instantiate a new module. And then you can start adding things to those new modules, similar to sort of scaffolding tools that are available for Ruby on Rails. So you will add a type, and that type you know, gives you create, read, update, delete sort of functionality of that type. Well, they have a new command for building a module, which is IBC ready. So it, it imports all of the base constructions for an IBC module, and instead of putting the logic inside of like the handler to handle a message, you start putting the logic in the on received sort of uh, uh, method of the actual sort of IBC protocol. So it's it's a scaffold for brand new IBC modules. And I was immediately like, oh my God, is this gonna be chaos? We're gonna have tons of new IBC modules before the, the ICS specs for all these application layers sort of get built out. Is this good, is this bad? And then it made me also think about interchain accounts and how kind of the point of interchain accounts is to give a one common interface for, for any message type to come through. Do you guys think that we'll see the growth of ICS standards for every single application, having every single message define its own, or more like interchain accounts where we just have a common interface that we try to shove all the messages through? So, well, go ahead, go ahead, Chris. Take it away. Okay. So, a fundamental element of the design of IBC is the separate layers. I, I will, uh, you know, what Chris goes referred to as the Tau of, of IBC, right? The uh, transport, authentication, and, and ordering. That's most of the spec. And it's because that was done right and bakes in everything we need that we can build application layer protocols easily. And so the interchain accounts is an application level protocol, transfer is an application level protocol, there will be NFT transfer. The power of IBC is partly we can get connected, we can, you know, it's easy to integrate into all these other chains, but every zone that Stargate enabled is sort of ready to knock IBC. But I believe there will be a lot of application protocols that people will build, not Ideally, you know, ideally not very, very customized, but it's the same way there's a lot of IP protocols, TCP IP protocols that people build. You know, some of them are great, you know, send a JSON blob across and you can do that over IBC, but, but a lot of them are very structured in order to serve some application purpose, but it can be used by multiple parties, right? There'll be, you know, social messaging, social messaging protocols and, you know, article news distribution protocols and stuff like that, where the more reusable they are, the better, but there's no reason to just have it be you know, uh, um, some very unstructured thing. Chris, yeah, that, uh, first I'm thrilled that uh, there are, the wonderful thing and magical thing about working on a protocol which has a spec and then becomes slowly disseminated across the uh, uh, wider ecosystem of IBC neophytes or IBC neo moments uh, is that things start happening uh, involving this protocol you wrote that have are completely outside of your control. You know, I go to sleep in Berlin and I wake up and now I hear about this like magical way to launch new IBC modules, uh, which I had nothing to do with. I didn't even know about it. You know, initially, initially you work on a protocol and it's like nothing happens unless you do it. You know, uh, I wish the IBC spec would just magically fix itself at night when I went to sleep and I wouldn't have to go think about it again in the morning. But for a long time, that definitely didn't happen. Uh, uh, but uh, I, now we're at the stage uh, where, you know, I. Uh, stay up too late and get too little sleep before coming to this call, uh, but then wake up and uh, all of this has magically occurred. I mean, I think that there will be uh, plenty of reasons to experiment with application modules before writing specs. Uh, you you can start using IBC in a very, you know, sort of low value or uh, prototype uh, friendly context in some kind of testnet or pseudo testnet zone. There's probably a lot of space on the spectrum between testnet and mainnet where these kinds of things could be played around with. And then standards can emerge and be agreed upon once. Chris, I gotta, Chris, um, I gotta cut you off. We're about to end. And I just no. wanted to have Sean see really quickly if you wanna say anything or if we're gonna get cut off and all we can say is thank you and goodbye. <laughs> I don't think we know all the ways that people are going to use IBC. And I think that's the point. Uh, <laughs> we, we, we want to sort of lower the cost of, of innovation and of coordination. So the fact that people are doing things that we don't know is, is a good sign that we're succeeding. Yeah. yeah all awesome. right, let's end it on that. You all, thank you so much for your time. Uh, keep an eye out for the upgrade and keep an eye out for what's next. Thanks, Thanks all. Thanks, Chachon.